And so, Professor, I have two questions to ask you. First of all, I like how you mentioned when I sat down and listened to your talk, and you mentioned at the ending about how people are not, especially researchers, are not more towards plants in terms of plant research as well. Um, and I've seen it as well. I've seen it myself that over the years, you always from bought from any of these classes. You have a tendency to not enjoy them as much, and you and you want to go towards, like, say, microorganisms related to more animal based, uh, but nothing that's necessarily into its interaction with plants. D do you think it? What do you think needs to be changed in a way? Or what do you think students should look forward to the interesting part of plants and why our entire lives are kept like that? So, what are your views on that? I'm so happy that you've asked me this question because uh, I think plants are really very super cool if I were to use this word, yes? But the reason they are super cool is because they are stuck in one place for all their lives. Now imagine if you are stuck in one place all your life. Just close your eyes and try to imagine that, yes? Uh, if something came to bite you, you wouldn't have been able to run away. If something, if you got rained on, if there was too much sun, there was too much uh, frost, uh, you, you couldn't get away from it. Animals can run away. Plants can't move, which means that plants have to adopt all sorts of fantastic strategies to defend themselves, to get their seeds uh, taken away to bring pollen into the plant because the only way they communicate with other plants is through the nervous systems of other interactors. So plants have to talk to the nervous system of an insect or a mammal or a bird in order to get it to communicate with a neighbor that is, you know, somewhat far away. So that's why I think the way plants have been regarded in undergraduate education or even postgraduate education, I think it's really terribly boring. And uh, if only people were to become aware of how you know, plants have all these strategies. Plants have memory. They have behavior. If you look at carnivorous plants, they react. They have. They don't have nervous systems in the traditional sense, but they are capable of a lot of reaction to so many stimuli. And I think that I, we are now beginning to realize the plants also have things like, for example, action. Ventures, yes. nervous systems, yes. or animal systems. Plants don't propagate them through nerves, but plants can respond to electrical stimuli, to touch stimuli. So they are, you know, rooted in one place, but handling all their problems just from that one location. So I think that's marvelous. I think it's beautiful to do that small exercise. I think that's something which we should probably test it on more people just to make them close and just imagine if you cannot move, what adaptation do you need, what interactions do you need with the environment to survive. It would be fascinating. Uh, so my next question again goes along um, what we're trying to, as we move on in science, there's just more developments and I see more complexity. Right? So one difficult thing to do is, is when you have a presentation of something very complex, how do you simplify that? So I think right now in today's world, we need to start learning how to communicate things that are complex instead of just saying what it is. Um, and I think it's for everyone, it doesn't matter what person you are, you should be able to explain to a lay person. Uh, so, so what are your ideas, what are your thoughts on science communication in the sense of how should we really put out things complex or should we try to make it simple so that everyone in the world can understand what exactly I think science communication can only be done by scientists or trained people who understand what they are writing or talking about. Because if you don't really understand your material in all its complexity, you would be unable to simplify it. And it's, in science communication, it's important to simplify without complexity 
recognizing the truth. See, it's very easy to simplify but leave out some important uh, factors which could actually make your simplification null and void. So, to do that, you must understand your material. And I do meet many young people who, when I ask them, Oh, what would you like to do? I'd like to be a science communicator. And I tell them that. Uh, you should be a scientist first. Yes, just be an expert in that. And then you can become a science communicator. It doesn't matter which branch of science, but that rigor of thought and the rigor of expression, if you can, you know, once you know that material, then you can explain it.